The Ultramarines, creators and ardent followers of the Codex Astarte, the fabled space book. Not only are they one of the most honored Space Marine chapters, they are also the Imperium's bureaucrats. The world looks down on the bureaucrats. They say we're anal, compulsive, and weird. The Ultramarines often cop a lot of flack from the Warhammer community, basically because they're the poster child of Games Workshop. Whenever a new Space Marine product is released by Games Workshop, you'd be pretty safe to put money on them being painted as Ultramarines. But in all rights, they are a very well-storied and well-decorated legion of the Space Marines. This scheme I'm going to show you here is a basic ultramarine scheme using contrast paints and airbrush. Perfect for knocking out large quantities of these ultra smurfs. Let's get started. First off, this model is primed in black using Vallejo Surface Primer. This is and probably always will be my favourite primer, to use from an airbrush especially. I read a lot of reports about this primer peeling off models, but to be honest I've never seen this happen before. It could possibly be bad batches, but I guess I've just been lucky. And because we're using the transparent contrast paints, we're gonna be pre-shading this with white, and I'm using Liquitex white ink for this. And the reason I use white ink rather than white paint is because it's quite transparent, so you can build up these layers quite slowly. As they dry, they look a little bit more faint and more of a gray color, which is great for this method. And no prizes for guessing which contrast paint I'm gonna be using. Yes, it's Ultramarine's Blue. Now I'm not sure if this is just the pot that I bought, but my Ultramarine Blue seems to separate quite a lot, so it needs a really good shake. And this is gonna coat the model completely. In my previous Horror Seriously videos using contrast paints, I do a bit of undershading, but this is gonna be a more of a traditional highlight, which is applied from above. And that highlight color is Calgar Blue, which will be thinned down to about 50% to make it go through the airbrush nice and smoothly. And this is gonna be applied directly from the top just to give us a nice subtle highlight. And if you don't want to apply this with an airbrush, you can just as easily use a dry brush using downward strokes. Now back to using a regular brush, our first layer color is going to be this Scale 75 Viking Gold, or whichever gold you prefer. I do quite like Retributor Armor from Citadel as well. And we're going to be applying this over the details on the shoulder and all the little bits of armor trim. And there's a fair amount of this trim on these Mark III Space Marine models. And for some of it you just have to be a little bit careful. And with this gold, we're also going to pimp out the Legion Vexilla that's on his backpack. And I chose this model to carry this banner because Ultramarines are usually pretty decorative. Their art style is pretty strongly based on the Roman Legions, which includes a lot of eagles and gold standards and things like that. And because it's Warhammer, they throw in a few skulls just for good measure. And just a quick note, you probably will need at least two coats of this gold going over this blue undercoat. Now, I like to do all of my metallics together so I can give my brushes a really good clean afterwards to get that glitter out. So using Vallejo Metal Color Gunmetal, which is the best metallic silver on the market, go ahead and fight me. I'm gonna be painting the sword, the bolter casing, and any of the pipes and vents on the backpack. And I also painted the poles on the Vexilla and the handle of the chainsword. And now for the flesh tone, I'm gonna to start with this Vallejo Brown Rose and I'm gonna give this two really thin coats. And as an alternative, you can use Bugman's Glow from Citadel, which is another really good starting point for light skin. You just don't get it in a dropper bottle, that's all. For the parchment on the banner, I'm gonna start with Zandri Dust. Now, depending on the base color, I'll either use this color or Rakar Flesh. Because this is a quite dark blue, I tend to go for the darker color, which is the Zandri Dust. And again, you'll need two thin coats of this. And for the laurel wreath that's on the Vexilla, I'm gonna be using Caliban Green. And this is another nod to the Roman aesthetic of these models. Now that all of our base colors are blocked in, we're gonna start shading. And starting with the armor, I'm gonna use a little bit of this Dragonhof Nightshade. And I wasn't really concentrating too much when I was painting this part, so the footage is pretty crap. But basically, I'm selectively putting this into all the little crevices of the armor. And this is just gonna give us a little bit more definition. Now for the gold and the flesh, we're gonna be using Reichland Flesh Shade. And I really like using this wash on gold because it makes it look really warm. And don't be afraid to overlap this a little bit onto the blue because it's gonna give you another little boundary between the two colors. And on the head, we're just gonna liberally apply this all over the skin just to make all those features pop. And to shade the banner, I used Agrax Earth Shade. For our first highlight, I'm going to be starting with Liberator Gold, and this is going to be highlighting, well, the gold areas. 
and I'm going to be selectively placing this over all the harder edges of the gold, including all the little rivets and not forgetting the gold details on the vexilla. And to highlight the parchment I'm going to be using Rakarth Flesh. And instead of a really smooth edge highlight, I'm just going to be picking out little areas of the edges of this, just to make it look a little bit more rough. I'm not a huge fan of really smooth edge highlights, but it does denote quite a bit of skill. Skill that I probably don't have, so I'm just going to use this as an excuse to make it look rough. But I think it works in my favour. Now to highlight the skin, I'm using my traditional two-tone, which is Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh. And starting with the Cadian Flesh Tone, we're just going to pick out the raised area of the face including the forehead, the nose and the eyebrows and just paying particular attention to the top of the head since this guy's bald. Hair is not really necessary in the 31st millennium unless of course you're an emperor's children. And when you're applying this paint, little short brush strokes will help you build a little bit of texture on this head. And the Kizla flesh will be placed in pretty similar areas, just a little bit more selective and just a lot less on your brush and just picking out those areas, making them a little bit more defined. Now this model is basically done, but I decided to do a few little extra details, including this knee pad, which I want to be white, so I'm going to start basing it in this Dawnstone, which is a medium grey, which is an important part for when you're painting white. Never start painting in pure white, because it will just look streaky, and it will give you zero opportunities for highlighting later. And when that's dry, I'm going to highlight the top two thirds of this with Celestra Grey. And that's about how far you need to go when you're painting white. If you want to do some extreme highlights, just bust out the straight up white. And following the same principle, just highlight the top two thirds of that previous colour. And whilst I have this grey out, I'm going to start painting a little checkerboard pattern on half of the shoulder. You basically just start off by drawing a chessboard. If you want a more detailed explanation of this process, check out my Dark Angels video. And then I'll finish it off with a little 13 in Roman numerals on the shoulder pad just to make it a little more flashy. Now, if you've ever bought a box of Space Marines, you've probably got some Ultramarines transfers knocking around, seeing as they chuck them in pretty much every box. And I'm just gonna use one of the logos on the right hand shoulder pad and a small blue one on the knee pad, using Microset to soften it and mold it to that curved shape. For drawing the text on the scroll work, I like to use one of these Copic Multiliners. This is a 0.03 millimeter version. And just pick some cool Latin words for anything that's large enough for you to see it. I'm just gonna paint Ultra on this main part, and then just some rough squiggles on the main blank area. Just a miniature Ultramarines logo, just for good measure. And then I'm just gonna seal these transfers with a little bit of matte varnish. This will also take down the glossiness a bit. I decided to go with a Martian base for these, so I'm using this Martian Iron Crust from Citadel. And this is basically a bit of pigment and some grit. Really handy for these smaller areas. Although you can buy larger quantities of plain texture for a lot cheaper. You just have to paint them afterwards. Once this is dry, I'm gonna give it a quick wash with Agrax Earthshade. Straight from the pot, there's no need to mess around with palettes on bases like this. And once that's dry, I'm just gonna give it a quick dry brush with Riser Rust, which is a super bright orange dry brush paint from Citadel. And then once the mini's stuck onto the base, we're just gonna tie it all in with a bit of this track rust. And I'm gonna be placing this using a dry brush around the feet of the model. Using these pigments at the end of the models, I find just connects it to the base a little bit more. It gives it a little bit of wear and tear and just makes it look like it belongs there. And there we have it, a Codex compliant Ultramarine. Now I don't paint these guys very often so it's quite fun to break the norm for a little bit. And I can see why people enjoy this army. They have a pretty great aesthetic. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for some more Horus Hiroshi tutorials. Next up will be the Death Guard.